firstly, let's compute the derivative. If you have the natural log of u, where u is a function of x, would be 1 over u, because the derivative of natural log is 1 over u, times the derivative of the inside, so u prime, which we normally just write as u prime over u. So the logarithms are really nice, because when you want to take a derivative, say, natural log of the sine of x, for example, well, what you do is you grab, in this case, u would be the sine of x, u prime would just be the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine of x, and you plug that in this expression, and you get the cosine of x over the sine of x. So this derivative is actually quite nice like whenever you have natural logs. And this one, by the way, you could see is the cotangent of x, if you wanted to write it like that. So that is one nice thing about the logarithm. It allows you to, or you can take the derivatives rather easily. Of course, you could get something like the following. And you say, well, I just apply my rule again with u being this. But you may want to reconsider, because then you end up with the derivative of this square root, and you get the derivative of this expression in the inside, which you would necessitate to take a derivative firstly of a, ch use a chain rule to take that derivative, then you have to do a quotient rule, and instead, what you can do is use rules of logarithms to simplify your expression. So for example, this one you could, this whole exponent, you could write it as one half in front. And just like that, your expression already looks much, much nicer. But you don't have to stop there. you can de then do one half and split that logarithm distribute the one half remember the one half is in front of both of them and now you can take your derivative there so now be careful whenever you do these kinds of problems a lot of people do the algebra and forget to take the derivative at the end so now, with u chosen to be this expression, then u prime would just be 2x. And in this case, let's call it v instead of u, because we already chose u for this problem. So if this is v, v prime is just 1. So using our formula now in a much simpler expression, we can write that the derivative equal to um, 1 half times the derivative of this, which is u prime, 2x, over u, which is x squared minus 1. And here, minus 1 half of uh, v prime, which is 1, over v, which is x plus 3. So here, we would get that the 1 half and the 2 cancel, so I just get x over x squared minus 1, and this one I could just do a 1 over 2 times x plus 3, and that's good enough right there. All right, so let's compute yet another one that is very typical of the exams for, for calculus, so let's go ahead and do that. So take the derivative or compute the derivative of the natural log of this sine, I might as well use cosine, well, I have sine now. So sine of the square root of x squared plus 5, something like that. Why do they give you that? Because, well, you have three functions. You have, a, uh, to do, you have to do a lot of chain rules, one after the other, and you get to practice your logarithmic uh, differentiation. So you get to do a lot of things all at once. But don't be, don't be too worried about it. 
I like to treat it like I'm peeling an onion. I start from the outermost layer and start working my way in until I get to the very center. I guess that's the way I peel onions. I don't know if that's how it is. Uh, but here I'm going to grab this right here to be U. And I'm going to compute that derivative separately. So I need U prime. So derivative of U. So now you notice that I'm going to have the derivative of a function that is composing another and another. So this is very typical of this example. So just what do you do? You concern yourself with the very outermost function. So at first when I chose this u and I'm computing my u prime is because I'm addressing the derivative of the logarithm first because I want to write it as u prime over u. I pick my functions. Now I have the derivative of sine of square root of x squared plus 5. So I have to now take the derivative of the outermost function. The outermost function is the sine, so I just write cosine. And then you don't worry about the inside, you just copy it. And then, by chain rule, you're taking the derivative of the outside, evaluate it at the inside, you pay the tax, which is the derivative of the inside. Add the square root of it. Okay, so you get the derivative of, now you did the derivative of the outside, evaluate it at the inside, times the derivative of the inside. So you keep going. So you get, you copy all this. The only annoying part is having to copy everything. This marker is a little bit more noisy than the other one. Sorry about that. So the square root is going to be 1 half. 1 half because I'm considering this as x squared plus 5 to the power of 1 half. So you copy the inside, which is the x squared plus 5 to the power of 1 half minus 1, negative 1 half. Now, I have another function in the inside, so times the der derivative of the inside. So you see, when I took this derivative, I considered it as x squared plus 5 to the power of 1 half. I drop the 1 half, subtract 1 from the exponent. And then, since I don't have x squared plus 5, I do the derivative of the inside. And then I get this 2x. Now, this is just a function of x. I don't have to do yet another chain rule. So now I can go ahead and cancel. For example, this 2 cancels with this 2. And I get that this derivative then will be... Uh, I can rewrite this one also, as we did in the previous video. So the cosine, the x go to the numerator, this square root, it has negative exponent, goes to the denominator. And at this point, I have that derivative, u prime. So all I have to do now is do u prime over u. So that's going to be equal to, and there's going to be a lot of simplification that I'm not going to fit, but you will get the idea. So you're going to have u prime, which is this. And then divided by u, which is right here. So I'm going to have to divide by u or multiply times its reciprocal. It's the same thing, right? But due to space, I mean, instead of having a big division, I'm going to multiply times the reciprocal of u. And just like that, you get your expression. Of course, this would become a cotangent, so you could probably just rewrite it as x cotangent of square root of x squared plus 5 divided by x squared, square root of x squared plus 5. So you would get that expression to actually simplify quite nicely, but we just ran out of space, so we'll leave it at that for this one.